Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is all about storage spaces, the innovative new way to save your data safely using Windows 8. We're also going to cover the ideal drive choice for storage spaces and why we went with the Western Digital Green Edition hard drive. Now the first thing is why green drives? First of all, never used them like this. This one's not powered on, but we're just going to go ahead and slide that back into place. We got five two terabyte green drives in here for a couple of reasons. Why green drives? Green drives have lower power consumption, lower noise, and are actually more environmentally friendly than even the last generation green drive. There's a new green drive on the block that has a whole bunch of different advantages. So a couple things. One terabyte platters mean that the one terabyte drive has a single platter. The two terabyte drive has two platters. This is great because it increases reliability and gives the benefit of extra performance due to the fact that there is much tighter data density on it. Now, that's difficult to achieve unless you're upgrading the technology in other parts of the drive as well. So it's using a dual head actuator, which is an enterprise level technology that allows much more precision in the read and write head, which is what enables that additional density. Now, they're also reducing the actual materials used, not only inside the drives themselves, but also in transportation. So the rare earth magnets that are used to manufacture of these drives have been reduced by 60% and even things like packing materials I've shown you guys pictures on Twitter of the boxes that hard drives come in instead of shipping 20 drives per box WD is now shipping 25 drives per box with these new hard drives Auto Sector Align is another feature that's especially cool for Windows XP operating system users. It's basically a utility that runs once automatically when you first create a partition to make sure that the 4K sectors are aligned with legacy operating systems that don't necessarily recognize 4K sectors properly and will cause performance degradation if the partition's not aligned. Now, Last thing I want to mention, this is really cool, is the fact that these new green drives also feature 3D Active Balance. So 3D Active Balance, we first saw it with the red drives as well as the enterprise level drives. What it essentially does is it is WD's way of determining if the spindle is balanced in all the different dimensions, all the different ways it can move, which reduces vibration. Especially for storage drives and RAID drives and enterprise drives, this is important because they have a very good chance of being near another drive and those vibrations can be passed from drive to drive. Without further ado, I'm going to show you guys how to use storage spaces. Now, if you guys remember Windows Home Server, which I talked about a lot, you'll know that I liked Windows Home Server a lot. And there was one really, really big reason that I especially, especially liked it. So we need more storage all the time, and we need better ways to attack this whole storage issue. Buying a bunch of matching drives all at the same time in an expensive controller card is not really a solution for regular consumers. What the old storage pool allowed you to do is take a random mishmash of drives, add them all to your computer, and then use a software redundancy that kept the data intact, even if you had to pull one drive out to recover something, and also had the advantage of not requiring any kind of matching hardware of any sort. So you just set and forget it, and you could expand it as you needed it. They removed that feature from Server 2011, Windows Home Server 2011, but it has now been added in a slightly different form to Windows 8. Every edition of Windows 8 comes with storage spaces, so the more storage you need, the more you're going to like this particular feature. All you got to do is create a new pool in storage space, tell it yes, you select which drives you want to add, they don't have to match. In this case, we've got five Western Digital 2 terabyte drives, but I'm going to show you guys later, I could add different drives if I wanted create the pool, preparing the drives. This will be done in a second. We'll be right back. Now what this did is it created, these are all two terabyte drives, a 10 terabyte storage pool. Now I can do a couple of cool things here. Number one is I can name it, I can assign a drive letter. So even though I have five drives, I don't have to have five different drive letters and keep track of where everything is because that can get confusing. I can select a type of resiliency. So there's three types of resiliency. One is two-way mirror, which is basically Every bit of data you write to drive, the top drive will get written to the second drive as well. And then the same goes for drives three and four and drive five will have it somewhere and they'll, they'll all distribute it. So every piece of data is on at least two drives at a time. The next one is three-way mirror. So that way every piece of data, every photo you store in this pool 
will be on three drives at a time, so it could sustain up to two physical drive failures without causing any issues. And the last one is Parity. This is really cool, again, it's all cool, because it is a software RAID 5 that is very flexible. It can be expanded, and mostly it can be expanded as you need more storage, which is really, really neat. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create a Parity volume, and we have some options down here. It tells me the total pool capacity is nine terabytes, 9.09, .09, so that's 10 terabytes, but rounded down. Size, maximum. So I can say I want a maximum size of 50 terabytes. Okay, okay, that's cool. Create a storage space, we'll be back in a moment. Now what I've done is I've added up to 50 terabytes of storage to my system and Windows will let me know when it's time to add more drives. But Linus, you might say, I've only got five or six storage bays in my tower. However, am I going to add more drives to it? And I would tell you guys the answer is quite simple because not only does the matching of the drives not matter, the matching of the interface doesn't matter either. The solution is easy. Check this out. I've got a MyBook Thunderbolt Duo which has two three terabyte drives inside it. Connected it using Thunderbolt. I can put up to six of these in a daisy chain and all of a sudden I can have more expansion than my head could even handle before it explodes. So all I gotta do is say, oh okay, I've filled up the, uh, the however many terabytes of storage I've already created for myself. I need to add drives. I select a couple unformatted drives, add the drives to the storage pool and a couple minutes later they will be added and they will be integrated into that structure that has all of the data parity bits being calculated or the mirrors enabled without any hassle and completely transparent to the end user. Now is storage space is perfect and is it a free solution that's a peer replacement for a high-end hardware RAID card, especially for something like RAID 5, which is very compute intensive in terms of writing the data because it has to do a lot of calculations the answer is no. So even with our seven drive array, we're getting around 50 megabytes per second with our disk speed test for writes and over 200 megabytes per second on reads, which means that you have quick access to your data, but in terms of actually writing stuff to your storage space, eh, it might not be perfect. So now what I'm gonna show you guys is how storage spaces can be used to create a very flexible storage arrangement. So check this out guys, I deleted my original storage pool, I'm going to create a new storage pool with all seven of my drives again, and this is a really cool trick. I'm going to create different storage spaces on the same pool. So I'm going to say, okay, that parity thing, yeah, it's good because I get more storage space out of it. If I have three drives, I get the same storage that I would get out of two drives, and then one of them is reserved for calculating that redundancy but the performance is not fast enough, especially for things like my you know, big media files or whatever else, so I'm gonna go okay. So I've got a total of 14 and a half terabytes of storage overall here, and I'm gonna go okay, I'm gonna use part of it for a two-way mirror. And then I can go okay, I want um, three terabytes of two-way mirror. All I gotta do is click three terabytes, two-way mirror, and then I'm gonna call this my two mirror storage space. That'll be drive letter D. So that mirror is for performance data that doesn't need to be all that secure. Then I'm gonna go, okay, now I got my precious memories, I got my photos that I really don't wanna lose. I want a three-way mirror for that so I can take two losses, no big deal. I'm gonna create a storage space. I've still got 7.27 terabytes of storage left. You know, maybe I don't have a ton of photos. I'm gonna allocate one terabyte for that storage space. I want a three-way mirror, here we go. That's gonna be storage space Z. And we're gonna call it photos, create storage space. And finally, I'm gonna recreate that storage space using parity mode, create storage space, we're gonna call this one archive, or something like that. So this one, we don't care about the performance, we're gonna call that drive, you know, I don't know, Q, parity, and we're using the rest of the storage that was in our drive pool for that one create storage space, and we can even set that one again to 50 terabytes or something like that so the OS can continue to warn us when it's time to add more drives. That gives us a fast, functional storage space for our high-end media files, a super secure storage space for our precious memories, and finally, a slow but efficient and cost-effective way to archive data. Now remember guys, none of this redundancy 
is a substitute for backups. You should still have a separate machine, preferably in an off-site location where you're doing backups, especially for something that's very, very important to you. Now we've created three different drives with three different performance and redundancy characteristics. Let's have a look at how they perform. So our two-way mirror is able to write at 123 megabytes per second and read at 145 megabytes per second. That is perfectly acceptable for what we're trying to do with it. Our three-way mirror performs pretty much the same, but remember guys, the three-way mirror costs more because for every gig of data you're gonna write to that storage space, you're gonna need to have three gigs of storage on three separate drives in order to actually store it with that kind of safety. But we see again, about the same performance. And in spite of what we've done to make the storage space more complicated, our parity performance is not affected in any way, which is very cool. So once you set this up for someone, all you have to do is walk away and tell them anytime the prompt comes up, just add more storage to your system and you don't have to think about it anymore. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode about storage spaces featuring the WD Green. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from your favorite retailer, ncix.com. Oh, actually, no, let's do a different shot instead. I changed my mind. But Linus, you might say, I've only got this many storage bays in my... It's okay. <laughs>